when my parents passed away, I inherited two pieces of furniture. One is a table that belonged to my grandparents. It actually was the very first table or piece of furniture that they ever bought when they went housekeeping. So it was purchased in the 1930s, kind of a typical 1930s piece of furniture with the drop leaf and the claw feet. And it's in pretty good shape, actually, over the years. I've taken time to make sure it doesn't get scratched. I use it now as an altar, actually, at the rectory. So on my day off, when I am celebrating Mass, that's what I always use. I think it's a nice way to honor my parents and also my grandparents. The other piece of furniture that I inherited was a cedar chest. And when I received it in around 2003, it had a lot of scratches on it. The whole top of it was scratched up. It had kind of faded quite a bit. And so I took the time to sand it down, to restain it, and to kind of bring it back to its original luster. I specifically remember this piece of furniture because it's not that big, about maybe three feet, and it stands just about two feet off the ground. And I remember it specifically because my parents always had it in their room next to the sewing machine. When my mom would sew, when I was about maybe five, six years old, one of my earliest memories was sitting there and being able to watch her sew or to occupy myself. So a lot of time was spent on that cedar chest, and a lot of time was spent making it look good today. I took the time to restore it. I'm kind of proud of it, actually, and it was worth the investment. Now I have it over in the living room. So it was obviously an opportunity to take something that was old, bring it back to its original luster, to restore it. That's a word that God really wants for us to think about this Advent, is restoration. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that we long for a time that was, doesn't mean that we bring something back to something the way it was, but we give it life again. We bring it back to a, a certain way, yeah, maybe that it was in the beginning, but certainly to a sense of newness as Christ came into the world, which is what we celebrate at Christmas time. This is this period of waiting, waiting for that celebration of the birth of the Messiah, but also waiting for, as Jesus speaks about in the Gospel reading today, a day when he will bring all things to himself. One day, one day when we meet him face to face, when Christ makes all things new. Restoration, in terms of faith, is nothing new. Actually, today, in the first Sunday of every Advent, we always celebrate a new liturgical year. So it's that time to restore our own hearts, to think of perhaps how we grew in this past year, but also what we have to look forward to in our life with Christ. And are there any blemishes? Are there any gaps? What restoration needs to take place to make us one with God, to allow us to be able to really feel a part of his family? See, back years ago in that time before Christ, hundreds of years before Christ, there was fracture in the family of God. To give a little bit of history, remember there was Jesse, and Jesse had the sons, and there is the tree of Jesse, and there is the house of Jacob, and there were the 12 tribes of Israel. And over time, under King David and under King Solomon, those tribes were like kind of all in unison, but over time it got fractured. And so as a result, when the kings came in and out, there was a lot of problems. And there was a lot of division. Actually, the whole Hebrew people, they split apart. And 10 tribes went to the north and two went to the south. So God sent prophets into the world. Prophets were not fortune tellers. They were not soothsayers. Rather, what prophets were, were able to talk about what was going on in their current situation and bring hope for the future to inspire the people with God's word. They were appointed as prophets. They just didn't speak this on their own. God gave them the words to say. And so there were major prophets and there's minor prophets. But their whole purpose was to restore the house of Israel, to be able to bring a unification to the people, to make the family whole once again, and that that would happen through the gift of a Messiah, through the person of Jesus Christ. Well, they didn't know it was specifically going to be Christ, but what they did know was that the person would come from the house of David, 
because that was a time of prosperity, of goodness, of joy, and of peace. And so God sent prophets into the world. And during this particular cycle, today you may look, you may notice, it's a brand new hymnal. So our readings this year, they come from what we call cycle C. There's A, B, and C. And this year they come from the Gospel of Luke mainly. That is what is highlighted. But during Advent in cycle C, each week the first reading is a different prophet. Each week. So today we heard from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. He talked a lot about a lot of heartbreak that would happen in bringing the people together. He talked about the idea of the Babylonians coming and taking over and the temple falling apart. And so Jeremiah was there to be able to prepare the people and to say, you're going to go through some really hard and difficult times, but it's going to get better. He lived about 600 years before the birth of Christ. Next week, we hear from Baruch in the first reading. Baruch is a prophet that in a Bible that is approved by the Catholic Church, you'll always see the book of Baruch. So if you go to buy a Bible for someone for Christmas and they are Catholic, remember there's some books, there's about 14 I believe, that are part of our Bible. We call it the deuterocanonical books that we approve as part of our sacred scriptures, but other faiths, including Christian faiths, they do not have them in there. And actually the Hebrew people, the Jewish, the Hebrew Bible does not include the book of Baruch in it. There might be some parts or references. But Baruch is one who was also there as a scribe of Jeremiah about 600 years before Christ, speaking about the shoot that comes from Jesse, from the house of David. The third week of Advent, the Sunday of joy, we hear from Zephaniah. And that'll be two weeks from today. And in Zephaniah, it started out, the book of Zephaniah, speaking about, about idolatry and about wrath and about judgment, but also that there's hope for the people because Zephaniah concludes by talking about true worship, by talking about rejoicing, and not by speaking about judgment, but speaking of mercy. And then on the fourth Sunday of Advent this year, just to give you a little preview, we hear from the prophet Micah. And Micah spoke about punishment that would come upon the people, but also he wrote about 800 years before the time of Christ. He spoke about how there would be punishment on the people, but also that there was going to be that gift of unification. So Micah was a contemporary of Isaiah. Isaiah is probably the prophet we know the best because he was the most prolific, wrote over 60 chapters in the Old Testament. Isaiah is represented here in our church with the scroll, the fourth window from the back, representing the prophet who wrote much about that whole idea of the Messiah that would come. So as we hear about these different prophets, specifically Jeremiah, Baruch, Zephaniah, Micah. And if you come to daily mass during Advent, you'll hear from Isaiah. We have to be given that gift of hope for restoration. They wrote for a restoring of the kingdom. They wrote in order that the North and the South, all of the tribes would be united back together. But we can transfer that today in hopes for one day Christ coming to us that Christ comes to unify all things and makes all things new. You see, we can have a restoration of our world. And when Christ enters into situations, it's amazing what happens because nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. So think about that for a moment. If nothing is impossible for God, what do you, this Advent, this new liturgical year, need to bring to him? What needs restoration in your own life? Is it a relationship? Is it a sense of order? Is it a sense just of having some sanity in your own life so that you don't get so caught up in these upcoming weeks in the busyness of life that you do not forget the reason for why we are gathered here? So if we think about that in our own lives, in this first week of Advent, 
to get to know the prophets, to remember why they came. Sometimes we gloss right over the first reading. We don't really think about it, but that part of the Bible is very special to us. That part of the Bible is our foundation that predicted what and who would come in the person of Jesus Christ. So the prophets had that ability to give us that hope, and we cannot lose that hope today. What do you need restoration on? I mentioned to you about a piece of furniture that I spent a lot of time trying to restore back to its original beauty. I'm very proud of that piece of furniture that I invested in it, that time and that effort. But I can assure you, that's just a piece of furniture. Your life is much more valuable and your spiritual life deserves the opportunity for you to invest in, to allow it to get back to its original luster and to have hope for the coming of the kingdom forever and ever, amen.